So a couple things about the basement. First of all, when you do modular prefab, um, you can't put it on a slab because the plumbing and electrical are essentially hanging out of the bottom of it. So you need a crawl space or a basement. We started with the idea that this would be a crawl space because we were working on a pretty tight budget. But once we got uh, into it and got the pricing back, they, they kept feeling cautious about it and said, you know, we think we're going to need the basement. So let's just dig the other four feet down. Um, I think there's a misconception with a lot of people that basement space is cheap space and it's anything but. Mm -hmm. It has to be waterproofed. It's built of reinforced concrete, which is far more expensive than wood framing. And um, it needs uh, ejector pits and sump pumps. And you know, it's, it's, and you have to dig and you have to haul. And in, when, once you haul, you need to dump. And that is really expensive in Chicago because people don't want your dirt. <laughs> so. You think the uh, landscape is, you know, those kind of outfits will work. Yeah, well, when you're down here, it's clay. They want topsoil. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, um, but this is great space for them. And uh, she's an artist and an art uh, therapy instructor. So uh -huh. she um, wanted an art space. And we did not have an easy way to bring that ventilation system down here. So I want to point this thing out on the ceiling, which is a, uh, a spot ERV. So just like the lungs of the house that I told you about upstairs, this is a small one that you can install in your house. Typically, you'll find if you analyze your air quality, and there's a nice thing online that's called the Hayward score. If you take the, um, <laughs> yeah, there goes the plumbing. Um, <laughs> Typically, we insulate those if we're in a finished space, so you don't hear it as much. Um, um, so the Hayward score will tell you what your air quality is and make suggestions as to what you should do. Um, I just did it on my house, which is a 1919 frame bungalow. And um, even though it's kind of you know, drafty compared to a house like this, it still said I should ventilate. And so think about it. Normally, if you're in a, a, a only ventilation you would have would be like a bath fan or over your cooktop. And so that'll get like the worst of the smells and the humidity out. But what about your bedroom where you spend most of the time, right? Are you getting fresh air there? And you'll find typically that you're not. And as you sleep, a couple people in a bedroom especially, the CO2 levels go up. And you know, it's just, it's good for air quality. So this is a way to do it and just sort of retrofit it into a house. And, it, and that's actually running right now. So if I turn it off, it's, it, you know, it makes a little bit of noise, but it's like a, it's like a bath fan, not too loud. What do you call that term? That's a spot ERV. So it's an energy recovery ventilator. And this is a Panasonic. So. Yeah. I did see a vent on this dryer. What's going on? Or is there <clears> one maybe that I'm not seeing? Oh yeah, no, uh, good question. So this is a, uh, this is a condensation dryer. So if you haven't heard of that, um, since we don't have gas, we don't have combustion gases to get rid of. And so the way it works is it puts a little heat into the drum and that makes the moisture condense out. And so you don't need to vent it. So these, I think, were originally invented for um, like a big apartments where you couldn't get a vent to the outside. So yeah, it's a nice uh, efficient way, again, to use electricity because you only need to put a little bit of heat into that drum. Think about the model, uh, the energy model of a typical dryer, right? You use a bunch of energy to put a bunch of heat in there and then you blow it out the side of the house. It's like the opposite of conservation. It's like how to, how to throw energy away. Whereas this uses less energy, puts it in there, and then it condenses. So these can be had from all kinds of manufacturers now. And one less hole in the wall, right, for air changes? Exactly. One less air tightness leak to have to seal. Yep. All right, well, let's head back up to the kitchen, why don't we, on the way out. All right, any other questions before I grab the next group? Very impressive. This is a great job. Thanks. I was saying to my niece, it feels very Scandinavian. Yes, that was definitely kind of the feel that they were looking for, bright and light. Certainly the blonde wood with the pops of bright color and a lot of white. <clears throat> yeah, and I feel like, again, that's part of that being inside a lot. You know, you look at very early 19th or 20th century houses with a lot of dark wood, you know, and, and it's one thing if you want it to feel cave-like, but if you don't, <laughs> it's nice to bounce some light around, especially in the middle of winter. Thank All right, you. Well, thanks for coming. Thank yeah. All right, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, thermal envelope uh, strategies, our values, air tightness? Yeah. Well, as a DOE zero energy ready house, 
my goal usually is to get about at least an R30 in the wall. So um, we use two by sixes filled with cellulose and then the zip sheathing on the outside of that for air tightness. So that's air tightened in the factory. And then when we put the modules together on site, we basically have those seams available to tighten. And then outside of that, we used uh, two and a half inches of EPS. So we got a third of our R value outside the air barrier with rigid foam mm -hmm. and then the rest of it inside. So it got to be a, about an R30 cavity. So when you start to take out the studs, it's a little less than that. But mm -hmm. um, if we were going, uh, if we were upgrading this to a certified passive house level, we'd probably be up in the 40s, uh, maybe R44, 42. What would you do to get there? Probably increase the foam. Okay. Um, I feel like well, that's what we've done in the past. We've done two by sixes with five uh, and a quarter inch of EPS. Mm -hmm. That gave us the ability to run a two by 12 buck mm -hmm. to join out to the outside face of the foam. Is it 24 inch on center? Around? Sometimes this, we went back and forth with the factory as to whether we would or not. Okay. We wound up framing at 16 on this okay. one. And what about the um, roof and the uh, slab? Yeah, okay, so we've got um, our, uh, let's see, we have uh, four inches below the slab, mm -hmm. so that's EPS, so that's yep. about a, our little less than 20, maybe uh, 16. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got uh, 20 on the outside of the walls. Mm -hmm. And um, and then on the roof, we've blown, um, about 24 inches of cellulose. Okay. So we're, we're up to the 70s okay. up there. It's a, it's a vented attic, so we have a lot of room to just kind of blow. Sure, 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 sure. Which, what did your air change hour come back at? Yeah, we came out at uh, just about one ACH 50. Okay. At, and so if you look at the, uh, the passive house metric of um, cubic foot of air changes per um, envelope area, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done four tours, so I'm starting to get a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or three hours, four hours of tours. Um, it, we, we hit the passive house metric for the, for the volume. So I was really pleasantly surprised about that. Okay. Um, in fact, when we came out to the blower door test, we almost didn't do it because I could see a few places where there were visible holes. Right. And um, Lindsay's still coming back for the final test. Oh, okay. So I think that that was our mid construction test before right. we had put on the outside uh, insofast uh, foam sheathing and before we had spray foam some of the gaps that we could see. Right. I mean, I was seeing these gaps, I said, let's not even bother. Right, right, right. But she said, no, we're here, let's go ahead and do it. And then they wound up going down the smaller and smaller rings and finally blowing it at like you know, 0.04 sure. CFM per, per square foot of envelope area. Right, but important to have that radar in here and to have you come through and oh, check it, right? I mean, absolutely critical. it got missed otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Well. And, or I wouldn't have known that we were as good as we were. Or yeah, <laughs> that, either that one, you wouldn't have felt like you did your best. So. Yeah. Um, and then just real quick, um, you talked a lot about ventilation, but the Indoor Air Plus program, which is part of DOE, um, what uh, are some ways you've got uh, finishes or materials in here that don't contribute to unhealthy air? Mm, yeah, um, a number of things. First of all, it's fortunately a lot easier now to find the sealants, adhesives, caulks, mm -hmm that are uh, Green Guard certified. So that's the baseline standard for us. And the great thing about working with high-tech housing, the, the, the modular factory, is that they were fine with all that. They had that whole protocol in place, okay. their sort of low toxicity protocol. So we reviewed all their shop drawings, everything was good, and certainly when it got delivered, there was none of that new car smell. Right. Um, so that's one part of it. Uh, the other part of it is all the cabinetry. We go for no added formaldehyde um, panel products. Mm -hmm. Um, we avoid any vinyl. Yep. Uh, we avoid, um, you know, most of the, I'm trying to think of what the other major things. Obviously paints are pretty easy to get the, the low or no, sorry, the no VOC. We use like AFM Safe Coat for the mm -hmm. paint or, um, or Ecos paints. So sure. yeah, the okay. zero, zero VOC, non-toxic. Right. Um, yeah, floor finishes, same kind of thing. So it's a pretty, um, it used to be a lot harder to do that, yeah. but um, fortunately it's not, it's not as hard anymore. You put that together with a ventilation system, I think you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, great. Well, um, thanks for having us out, and, and where can people find out more information about your work? What you? Well, you can certainly find us at drawingonplace.com on the web, um, but also uh, Illinois Green 
uh, sponsors these kind of things, and we work with them a lot. And the Passive House Alliance Chicago is yeah. another great place with a whole bunch of people doing this kind of work. So, And we got a gold V4 around here that maybe we'll come film later. Um, lead project? Yes. Yeah. Or in Illinois, rather. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Downstate. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look yeah, forward to that. Yeah, that's an exciting one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Good. thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Glad you could come. We could do this. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, and a big thanks to uh, our volunteers, our board of directors, our members, and our sponsors who allow us to do what we do. A huge thanks to our top sponsors, T-Stud, who make um, insulated studs that help save energy and money in the walls, and Shrinergy, who have uh, microgrid solutions uh, and portable battery and solar solutions for emergency issues, for travel, uh, and for backup energy and saving energy at home. Check them out. And make sure to go to our website, greenhomeinstitute.org. Again, check out all of our videos and upcoming session and live webinar events. Thank you.